Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm catching crawfish with my good friend Captain Ronnie Adams from the TV show Swamp People. We'll be checking his traps, and then I'm going to show my favorite simple way to boil these tasty mud bugs. Let's get it started. Oh, we're heading back to my little honey hole, Buck. We're going to get on these crawdads, Buck. Catching about a sack, sack and a half a day. The golden ticket here, crawfish bait. We're going to have a good old time, and then we're going to fill our bellies at the end of the day, baby. I'm excited, just like any typical person from South Louisiana. I love my crawfish. I hope he don't work me too hard, though. We got the first at three, six, nine, eleven, eleven. Eleven on the first go round. Not bad, but it ain't great. So every time you pick up, you got a rebate. Yep. And I use that uh, block that, that I'm telling y'all, if y'all can find that it's hard to come across, but this block bait, them crawfish love it. You can't use it for nets because ain't nothing to hook it to. But if you got traps, any type of trap, you put that block bait in there, boy, that sucker works. And I also keep one pole in there and each one just to hold them in there. You know, once they get into the trap. Because if not, they'll crawl out. I mean, look at all the babies. When you pull out, it's full of babies. So that's future. In two weeks, that'll be eating size. So I kind of just get in here and I want to keep that trap out the water. These hyacinths took over the canals down here. And, they, and you don't pump them out and that, and the water, we ain't been getting no good hard wind and that to push them out of here. So you literally got to dig in and dig your little hole to put your trap, but you got to be careful because it's loaded with snakes. I mean, you loaded with snakes. And this is kind of how I do it. Right there. Old crawfish ball waiting to happen. So like, we've done a few different types of trapping. We set pig traps, set out crab traps, but I don't know that I've ever been so excited to check traps. Whew. Look at that, my baby. Loaded. And it's just gonna get better. Once the, once the cool gets out of here, they cook, that little cold front last week put a damper on them. But boy, once it starts heating up, they're gonna pick up, boy. I'm like a kid right now. I just can't. <laughs> it's too fun. <laughs> There's two traps we checked, and we all like just giddy. It's awesome. Come on, big boy, get out of there. There we go. So each trap has an opening, what, at the top, right? Yep, for your bait. Bait goes in here. And, and empty in it. Let's show them the bottom. Let's so you, uh, close it up once that so they don't crawl out, but in the bottom it's got two funnels. Now you can get these traps made to all different types of sizes, what your preference is. Some, I see some traps got three funnels, you know. So the crawfish goes in here, but he can't get back up. And that's it. It's and pretty I, simple. And you got to set them funnels right now because if you don't have them, if you have them too wide, they're going to crawl out of there. When you, They'll see you coming to run that line and they'll shoot out of there. And they'll rob you blind with your bait. All right, let's see. Yeah, we got a few. Check that out. Man, that is awesome. Crawfishy. That's only the third trap. Oh. I know. They're starting to pick back up, brother. They starting right. to pick back up. So they all just fall through. Didn't have none at the top. All right, and then you just do your death. You throw your bait off. Yeah, but see them catfish heads. I keep them in there because they attract. Okay. To them. You want to bait it? 
Yeah, I'll do it. Go ahead. Put that catfish. Okay. I'll put right. about three of them blocks and one pogey, and I'm going to go okay. grab the next one. All right. Thank you. Catfish in. Three blocks. One, two, three. And a pogey. And then we roll that. I hear them in this one. Oh, I like that sound. I didn't. I didn't hit this. I didn't hit that one yet. No, that one I, I checked it around. Okay. But I put another one somewhere. I moved yesterday. I'm just trying to remember what I did. Yeah, I like that sound. You pull it up and you hear crack, 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 crack. Ah, good stuff, oh man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Crawfishy. Yeah, I hear a little crawfishy. Yeah, like you said, man, another couple of weeks. Golly, these guys will be so big. I mean, look up look at the size of this one. Oh yeah, dude, they're yeah. growing, dude. Look at the size of that. I'm telling you, man. That dude, another two weeks, we're gonna have nothing but big. Nothing but them on in. Gotta give them room to crawl up to the top here so they don't drown. So you want something sticking out the water. Oh yeah, we got a few baby. Okay. When they all start to get big, that's a good sign. Oh, yeah. A little bit? That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, what I like about this, too, is you're not in the boat. You're walking around, getting some exercise, yeah. getting some fresh air. Dude, oh, we yeah. got, I mean, it's getting there. Oh, yeah, it's getting there. And I think we only ran like nine, ten traps so far. Still got 35 to go. Right next, not even five feet away. Wow. So, maybe, so you throwing something like that or keep that? I, I'll put that back in. Yeah, there about to say. Yeah. It. If it's if it's eating up pretty good on both sides like, like that, that, throw it away. Just okay. throw it on the ground to gotcha. keep, give that out of something to eat. Yeah. Instead of yanking my traps off. Right. you and then they got this one right here this one had about 20 oh damn you could see him yeah. look at that oh yeah oh yeah boy huh? what you like to hear man tick, 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 tick. I'm ticking in the trap. I love it when it gets like that, man. You're getting up a better now every two feet. Right. Oh, 
left of the little one. You look, jeez, he's gonna kill it, bro. Look at that soccer, bro. <laughs> that soccer is full, bro. It's gotta be this tree, huh? I don't know what it is, Buck, but that's a short, little different mesh type trap. Wow. Let I me mean, look at it, bro. Kind of move them around, but boy, you the sawgrass is unbelievable, bro. They catch the heck, they, get, they bite so much better than sawgrass. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So you got this stuff here. Okay, this is an old canal, man-made canal. And this water hyacinth is an invasive plant that came in and it covers the entire surface of the canal. And it could go for miles like that. Now, if you get a hard freeze in the winter, it'll kill this stuff off. If not, in the spring like we have, we even had a hard freeze. I'm sorry, I take that back. We had a hard freeze this winter. It still wasn't enough to kill it. So here is the spring and this stuff is just chock-a-block. But if you lift it up and you see all that under there, that's what those crawfish like. They like all that stuff that hangs down in the water under there. So Ronnie sets his traps and holes and the crawfish come from areas to get to the trap there. You have the sawgrass here. It has a real hard root system down there. And his crawfish probably like to hang out around that root system down there. So he's saying when he puts the traps in there, they tend to do really well. All right. See this guy back in here. Let's see. Got a couple. All right, so this is the one he said's been the best trap. It's been the money go get it here, Buck. <laughs> Look at the crawfish in that thing. That's bad, too, because I had much bait yesterday. But, dude, this trap here, I don't know why it sucker catches. Maybe it's because that drainage canal comes out to it. I don't know. But, boy, if they all caught like this, we'd have sacks. Yeah. We got about 20 pounds, which really isn't bad considering that there was a cold front that we're coming up off of. Once it stays consistently warm for a few days, these traps should catch really good. But really, it's about the experience. It's about getting out during the spring, walking around, getting some fresh air, and doing it yourself. So when you go home and boil them yourself, you know you caught them. Perfect thing to take the kids to do. They can run around, help you pull up traps, help you bait traps. Thanks, Captain Ronnie, for having me along. I hope I was a good little helper. Now let's get cooking. All right, now comes the fun part. Time to start boiling. Now you could talk to 10 different people and they'll tell you 20 different ways to boil crawfish. So what I'm gonna show you is kind of the quickest, easiest way that I do it. I don't use a lot of ingredients. I kind of let my seasonings do the talking. So first tip, rather than filling your pot up all the way and letting your burner try to bring it up to temp, what we're gonna do is start off with about an inch of water, let that come to a boil, then leave the hose on a slow trickle, and then let it come up boiling as the pot fills. So what I'm gonna do is, if your pot has handles, you come in, and you just wanna get to where your hose kinda hangs over. Like so. If you fill your pot up and then light everything and try to bring it up to temperature, it's gonna take forever for it to get to a rolling boil. This way, as soon as it gets to the level that you want, pull the hose out, drop your seasonings, and you're ready to boil. All right, so I've got about an inch of water on the bottom. So now I'm gonna go ahead and light my burner. Now with your burner, you may have a cover on the part where the flame comes out. You wanna leave that completely open. So your burner should look like that, not with a cover on top. I'm also gonna open the propane tank pretty wide open. I mean, you want that flame to really be getting after it. All right, so as you can hear, that flame's going pretty good. That's what you're looking for. All right, so your hose should be completely turned off. Let your inch of water come up to a boil. Once it starts boiling, you'll let it trickle out. If you notice your water rising up and it's not boiling, you need to slow down your trickle on the hose. All right, I'm pretty close to a good boil going. I'm gonna stir it just a little bit and that helps to spread your heat around a little bit better. So now my one inch of water is to a rolling boil, so I'm letting my hose trickle. Less is more here. Don't get overexcited and try to do too much. 
because your burner won't be able to keep up. So just monitor it closely, and if your burner's not keeping up, slow your trickle down a little bit more. All right, I got my water up to the level I wanted, which was about a third of the pot. We got 20 pounds of crawfish, so you don't need to go to the full half. Now, I'm using Louisiana Fish Fry Products Crawfish Boil, and if you look on the back of the bag, they'll tell you how much of the bag to use per pound of crawfish. So this entire bag would boil 45 pounds. We have about 20 somewhere in there, so I'm gonna use about half the bag. So I also like to add some liquid crawfish boil as well. Now this stuff, you don't need much of it. A little bit goes a long way. Now in a full sack, 30 to 40 pounds, I'd add about probably a quarter of this. So I'm really just gonna add a couple capfuls here. And that's it, don't need to go too much of this stuff. So I like to do my potatoes first, get those done, and then get them out and get them into a cooler so they stay hot. So we're gonna do one sack of potatoes. I use the red potatoes just cause that's kind of traditional. Golden potatoes are awesome though. All right, put the cover on. I'm gonna let the potatoes go for about 15 minutes, then I'll start checking them. You just want them to get a little bit soft. All right, my potatoes have been going about 20 minutes now. I'm gonna pull them out, get ready to drop them crawfish. All right, so as I mentioned before, if you talk to 10 different people about how to boil crawfish, they'll tell you 20 different ways. So if you noticed, I didn't add any onions or garlic to mine. The reason I don't do that is I don't find it's necessary. A lot of that stuff is in your seasoning packet already. So what you wind up doing, in my opinion, is adding a lot to the pot that doesn't ultimately affect the end flavor. So I'm saving a little bit of money and a little bit of time not having to chop that stuff. Now one thing that does help your flavor along is citrus. And you'll see a lot of people chop lemons and put lemons in there. I don't do that. I get the orange juice and I add that. So I'm gonna add a gallon and a half of orange juice. And what this does too, since I'm adding a gallon and a half of orange juice and a half a gallon of pineapple juice, you don't need to add as much water. You cut your water down a little bit if you're gonna try this. And we'll go with our half gallon. And our pineapple juice. And another reason I like to use juice rather than the actual citrus fruit itself when you're eating crawfish, it's like you suck the head, there's juice everywhere. And I just find using the juice, it tends to even help the flavor along and get on your fingers and it gets everywhere. So we got our juice in, I'm gonna crank the heat back up, get this back to a rolling boil, and then we'll be ready to drop our crawfish. All right, now we're back to a good rolling boil after we add our juices, it's time to drop the crawfish in. Thank you brothers for your sacrifice, we appreciate it. All right, so what you wanna do here is, you got your crawfish in, we wanna boil them for anywhere from about eight to 15 minutes. No longer than 15 minutes though. I try to stay around 10. You also wanna get you a paddle or a big spoon and kind of mix them around. Get them moving in there. Get the guys that are on the bottom, get them to the top. So like I said, I'm gonna let them roll at a boil for about 10 minutes. Then we wanna shut that heat off and start trying to cool it down and let them soak. The soak is the most important part of doing this. That's where your flavors get to really know the crawfish and get some time to sit in there and get settled. We'll go with our lid back on to try and trap some heat in there and we'll let them boil about 10 minutes. All right, my crawfish have cooked for about 10 minutes. It took them a little bit over five minutes to get to a rolling boil. And that just all kind of depends on your burner. Most of us have single burners. Some days it's windy. So I try to gauge, you know, uh, how long it takes it to get to a, back to a rolling boil once you drop the crawfish. Once and if it does get back to a rolling boil, you really don't need to go any more than five minutes. So I'm gonna cut it off. Now my flame is completely gone. I'm gonna pull my lid off. 
And so a lot of times at the crawfish boil, you see corn and potatoes. Now, if you don't have frozen corn like I have, you would have put your corn in with the potatoes. At this point, I like to do frozen corn because I'm trying to bring that temperature back down as quickly as I can. I don't want them to really cook any longer. I just want them to soak. So I use frozen corn for this part to bring that temperature back down. I also got my mushrooms and I threw them in the freezer as well. I'm going to drop them in, let them soak. Now you see some people will use ice at this part. Ice is fine as long as you take into consideration your beginning water. So in other words, if you like to use about a half a pot of water to boil your crawfish in, cut that down a little bit and account for your ice at the end. Your ice, your frozen corn, your frozen mushrooms, all you're trying to do at this point is bring that temperature back down and give those crawfish a chance to soak without continuing to cook. You'll even see some people hose down the pot and do all that. That's all fine and good. I stick with the frozen corn because that's what works for me. So we'll get everybody moved around in there. I love that sound. You know, the only thing better than the sound of those crawfish moving around in that trap might be those crawfish moving around in that pot when you stir it. All right, so that's it. Now it's just the soak. Now how long you soak it just depends on how spicy you want it to be or how long you boiled it for. The best thing you can do here is let it go for about five minutes, pull one out, check it. Let it go another five minutes, pull one out, check it. There's really no wrong way to do this part as long as you didn't overcook them in the boiling process. All right, so they've been soaking about 15 minutes, just long enough to enjoy a cold beer, honestly. So let's pull them up. Now this particular pot has the little kickstand, so we're gonna kick it and we just wanna let them drain. This is when people start kinda coming in and seeing what you got. Just be patient. If you're the ball master, everybody's there to have a good time. Enjoy it. All right, and there it is. I mean, these things have become like Bayou Gold here recently in the last few years. Highly sought after. Now you saw how to catch them. Now you saw how to cook them. So please, please, please subscribe. We got plenty more coming this spring. We're gonna do a lot more cooking. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Captain Ronnie from Swamp People. Go check him out on History Channel. Like this video, click the notification bell down below so you know we put out a new one, and we'll see y'all soon. All right, y'all, we out here. We are doing some crawfishing today. We're actually in crawfish ponds. So these aren't crawfish that are caught out in the wild, out in the swamps, out in the marsh. This was a pond that was dug and designed specifically for crawfish. We got about 90 traps we gotta check today. They're all baited with a mixture of some shad, some pogies, and some speckled trout. And we got a lot of work to do, but I got me some helpers. Y'all got y'all waders on? Yep, yep. Jack, show them what you can do if you see a snake. What you can do if you see a snake. Hiya! <laughs> all right, so here's our little setup. We got a sled, okay, with our champagne basket that's where we're dumping our crawfish into and you got these pyramid traps all throughout the pond that's the trap there that's a three quarter inch square mesh trap with uh it's got three throats on it and the mouth here so you can grab it and pull it up and we've got a bunch of them all throughout this pond to go check so let's get started all right so you grab it on that edge there Good, pull it up slow. Oh, you got some good ones in there, Cora. That's the best one yet. All right, now I want you to dump it, just like I showed you, into that basket. So, so put your hand on the bottom. There you go. None, nobody's gonna hurt you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it off. All there right, dump it all out, Cora. Dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Good, that's it. Now y'all gotta take that piece of fish and throw it in the water. That bait fish, Jack, if you wanna grab that. Do it. It's in that basket. No, there's two. I'm not doing it. Oh, y'all are crazy. Okay, I'll do it. They're yep. not gonna bite you. Okay. They're grab surrounded. It. Grab it, grab it, They're grab surrounded. it. Grab it. Hurry, hurry, go, 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 go. I, I know, I know. Good, I'm... throw that in the water. Alright, listen, when you stick the trap back down, you gotta push it, Cora. Mm -hmm. Okay? Alright, so these crawfish ponds are flooded seasonally. Sometime in the fall, you go ahead and flood them. At that point, that's when some of the crawfish start to come out of their burrows. Right about now, 
the spring is kind of prime crawfish season. As the water temperatures heat up, these crawfish like this, they're about to enter into another breeding cycle. They're getting active, they're out feeding, and that's when we like to catch them. All right. One stuck. All right, Cat. Mr. Bobby. Someone grab it out. Here's a hold it by that thing. Okay. Ooh. There's a baby. That was a good trap. It's heavy. I can't hold it. I can't right, hold come it. Come dump it. It's my last stick. One stuck. Just hit it. Shake it. All right, now stick the trap back down, Cora. Stick it exactly how it was, where it was, baby. No, it was in the middle. All right. Oh, we got the bait still in there. Oh. All right, folks. Come on up. What's that one? So we're catching primarily red swamp crawfish here today. That's probably the number one crawfish in Louisiana, especially in these ponds. And these crawfish, believe it or not, can spawn year round. There's peak times when they like to do it, but they can actually spawn year round. And start growing oh, into these delicious crawfish. I, oh, I I and they grow pretty quick. A baby crawfish is ready to eat in about four months. Oh, there's one. I, I got you like to pull it up and see it, all of them like that, but it, a little oh, bit early in the year. I, so I, I'll get this guy off. You may not have get out of me. every trap full. And then, so Mr. Bobby is coming up behind us, and he's baiting as we empty traps. All right, see if you can dump that one by yourself, Cor. There you go. You got it, my baby. Shake wow, it good. Sweet. Shake it with two hands. Good. Shake it. Don't crush your crawfish, though. Yeah, don't crush it. There you go. Good job. Now stick it back. Mr. Bobby's going to come bait it. Ooh, that's a jumbo. Oh, look at that jumbo, y'all. That is a jumbo. It's a female. Yeah, that's a female. It's a female Big old girl? female. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a girl. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, she girl? got me. Let me go. Let me go. All right, oh, we're good. All right, let's keep moving, y'all. Let's keep moving. All right. So this is a taller pyramid trap. And it's got some nice crawfish in it. Like I said, this is three-quarter inch square mesh. But in the wild, when you're fishing for wild crawfish, you cannot use the square mesh um, because it's just better at catching. And in the wild, we want to be more conservative, I guess, about the crawfish. See, this is, that's the original bait. That's the bogey that we use, which is a great, phenomenal bait for pretty much everything. All right, y'all, let's see what we got. Just one giant crawfish and one it? little baby. See? see that little bitty baby? Okay. Look, a little bitty baby and a big old giant. Yeah, Cora. You want That's a giant, huh? That's a giant. That is about as jumbo as they get right there. That's. All right, dump it good. Shake it good. All right, good job. All right. I love to pull it up and hear them flapping, y'all. I love to pull it up and hear that. All right, let's go make a dump. Now, what you do with these ponds, you start to drain them probably around June, towards the end of crawfish season when crawfish are ready to start burrowing to start the egg fertilization, the egg hatching process. So you start draining your ponds then. So this pond here, come summertime, will be empty of water. That water's gonna go down. The crawfish are gonna be burrowing along the edges. And then as the water drops, they'll burrow in here. And they're gonna go and raise their eggs underground. And then all summer long, this vegetation grows up. This vegetation is key to the whole thing because that's what holds everything that the crawfish eat. Yes, the crawfish eat vegetation, but they also eat invertebrates. And it's all driven by this vegetation. All right, don't grab it from the bottom. There you go. Don't crush your crawfish that's in there either. There you go. 
That was a good dump, Jack. Tap it, tap it. There you go. And a little bait even stayed in there for you. That's all right. Stick the trap back. There you go. Let me push it down. Oh my God, that looks so big. Go ahead, go on. Good job. Good for the out little guy. All right, y'all. So this pond is its own little ecosystem. See this alligator grass here? This is a big part of it. You got root systems, all of your little invertebrates, and even some fish can hide in that. That's what you get. Crawfish, baby. All right, Mr. Bobby, show us what you got there. You see, it's a big female. And what makes it a female? You don't see the male part right here. Oh, okay. I'll catch a male and show you the difference. <laughs> cool. So what's a good day of crawfishing in a pond like this? Two years ago, if I ran them, all three ponds, I'd get somewhere around eight, nine sacks. Wow. They're all at this. <laughs> Today won't be like that, but no. we're catching enough to eat, that's yeah. for sure. Okay. But, and you get a whole bunch of them like this, it's fun. All right, hey, we're making a little pile. We'll have I enough to I'm filling the water! Whoa. Okay, that's all right, take your time. Did the deep pool so big? I did the same thing yesterday. Really? Go ahead, go ahead and dump it. We'll get that grass out. You actually got a few crawfish in that one. Come yeah, on. I see it. Thank you. We're just gonna have to get the grass out, that's all. I can help. There you go. All right, good job. Okay, Stick it back. Okay, that's all. That's all. That's all. All right, let me start getting grass. This has got clover in it. How about that? Oh, there's all. Oh, I was gonna get that. Is it a four leaf clover? No, no it's not a four leaf. A lot of clover in this one. Oh, we're going to that one. No, you're not. Good ones? Yeah, that one's a good one. Right there. Hold on, hold on. Right there. See it? Wow. Yeah. I wonder why we keep good getting bigger one, ones. Alright, go ahead. I should get these guys off. Get that big one out. Oh, this one's stuck. Alright, you Push it. Push it. Good. There you go. Get your bait off. You might grab the fish. I'll grab the bait. So these are called pyramid traps, and they're designed mm. specifically for crawfish ponds. Now, a lot of times you'll see a boat. Wow, Drive down a row of traps and pick There's them up, but we're doing it old school. There's a can in there. Shake it good. We gotta get all that trash out once we. It stinks. It does. Okay. <gasps> what was you that? Right? The can's in there. The can's in there. That scared me. The right. can's in there. Stick your trap back. No, I'm not going by there. All right, let me see. I'm not going I wonder how that got in there, huh? Ew. All right, the old bait. Got a lot of grass in that one. Let's see if we get some of that grass out. These are called the red swamp crawfish here. And the re one of the ways you can tell is that black line, that dark line going down the inside of the tail. That's one of the things that sets him apart from some of the other crawfish. Obviously the red color, but you can't always go on color. Cody, hurry up and move. But that's gonna be a beautiful crawfish to cook. Yeah. And we're doing pretty good so far. All right, y'all, we did good. Uh, I'd say we got about 25 pounds. All right, so what we need to do now is start getting the little ones. Where'd he go? We need to get, there he is. All right, so these little ones like this, we want to put, put him them away? back. He's already gone. Oh. Go get him. Go grab him. Grab him and throw him. Any ones that are real big, we're going to leave. All right. Medium. medium, you leave. So, let's see. See, like this one here, this one's kind of small. There's no, really no point in cooking that one. We could put that one back. 
and we're not gonna get all the small ones but we'll see a few by doing this see like that one we could put him back why would we put that one away he got to that's the car that's the ultimate goal right here this big one who's so big he's he's trying to eat another one huh that's a good one y'all that's a big one. monster right there that one's got another shed left oh yeah yeah, see this crawfish here has not finished its molting process, so we'll put that one back. He almost pinched me. What about this guy? Yeah, we could put him back. Oh, this one. This one's little. Yeah, that's a lit. That's oh. a good one to put back. Here, put that one back. Oh, he was oh, pinched me. Oh, come on, me. Cora. Pick through some of these. Yeah, they soft too. You can yeah, feel. You can feel it. Sort a few more. Okay. Hold on. See, like these little ones. Put that back, huh? Can yeah. I come back and see if we can? Right. Can I do this little guy? Yeah. As you can see, these younger ones actually are more green in color. What about him? But this crawfish was probably born what, Mr. Bobby? Like no late November? I say somewhere around that because yeah. I showed the palms up. Yeah, so that crawfish is November, December right there. That's how quickly they grow. All right, y'all, so we got about 25 pounds. Uh, a typical sack is anywhere from 30 to 35 pounds, so we just about caught a sack. Not too bad for about an hour to put out the traps and about an hour to check them. All right, so these private ponds like this, they don't need to be very big. These here are about an acre, the ones that we fished today what they do is sort of mimic the natural process of flooding that the crawfish are used to when they live in a swamp or in a river and are in a natural pond but you're able to really really dial things in and control it a lot better and you get a higher crawfish yield in a pond typically than you do in the wild there's just so many factors in the wild that you can't control so let's say one year you don't have a lot of flooding and it's really dry well that's going to affect the next year and then the next year in the wild in the ponds, you can always kind of continuously flood your ponds and control the water. So that's the advantage there, is that you just, you get to have a lot of control over what you do. Now, the crawfish that we're catching, like I said, are the red swamp crawfish. Fairly cold weather tolerant. We don't get a lot of cold weather here in Louisiana. So this is really an optimal place for these crawfish to be. Now, one thing about the red swamp crawfish, it's very invasive in other parts of the country and even the world. There's places in China where they've taken over the rice paddies. Places like Oregon, Wisconsin, they're seeing this red swamp crawfish show up everywhere. So if you're interested in catching them, let me know. What else do you want to know about the crawfish? How to catch them? What traps to use? Just leave me a comment. Let me know. We're going to be doing a lot about crawfish this year. So let me know some of the things you want to learn about crawfish. All right, well, we got them good and sorted out. We put as many of the little ones back as we could pick. Now it's time to get back to the house and get cooking. All right, well, I'll be honest, it was a long day of crawfishing. We're tired, we gotta do something fast. Uh, we went from the crawfishing, we bowled the crawfish, but since you've already seen me bowl crawfish, I decided not to do that again, so we kept some of the tails from the crawfish bowl and some of the garlic, and I'm gonna show you what I do with it with some backstrap. All right, so I cut up some backstrap real thin, tenderize it, that's all I've done up to this point. We got some Italian breadcrumbs. All right, so we're gonna take it and go right into Italian breadcrumbs. Okay. I like to do that. Get them all ready first. All right, so I got all these thin cut and tenderized pieces of backstrap covered in Italian breadcrumbs. Now I want to season them with some Everglades. You can put a good bit, okay, like that. And then come on over here and we're going to drop it into a pan with about a third a stick of butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil. All right, I'm not doing this for very long at all. And once you start to get brown on one side, just go ahead and flip. Should not take very long at all to do this. Alright, there we go. Alright, 
y'all. And that's pretty much it. Definitely don't need to let that go long. Go ahead and start getting them out. Um, it's okay if your deer meat isn't all the way cooked through because that makes for nice, flavorful deer meat. Mommy, have to come on, Papa. What'd you have to tell him? Subscribe and click the comments. Click the comments? Click the comments. All right. And click the penalty so the uh, waffles get rubbed. All right, turn your heat down low. And that's the crawfish tail from the crawfish bowl that we did earlier. We got some gras dew in there. We'll go ahead and drop a little bit of lemon juice. Just to get that up. Moving around. All right. That's common. You can also use white wine here, but we use lemon juice. That's what we had. That's what we got. We're going to squeeze in some of that garlic from the crawfish boil. We'll do a little bit more, huh? Can't hurt anything, right? Get a good crawfish bowl garlic. Can't let that go to waste. Stir that up, mash that garlic around. Take that. Cover up your back strap. That's it. Eat it with a fork. All right, there it is. Super simple, super easy after the crawfish bowl, save you some tails and cook it up with some pan fried backstrap. Mm. How about that? How about what? Can you try it? Jack, you wanna come try it? Okay. All right, Milo, what you say? Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. Thank y'all so much for being a part of what we do. Thank you for accepting me, my kids, all the craziness every week. The last has been your last <laughs> That's who we are, y'all. We love you. Thank you for being a part of what we do. Yeah. See y'all next yeah. time. Thanks for watching Daddy's video. Bye. All right, y'all, I am down here at the Louisiana Crawfish Festival in beautiful St. Bernard Parish. And this is an annual festival they do every year. Huge, huge crawfish festival. I can't wait to show it to y'all, and we want to make sure you come. So head on over to that website, louisianacrawfishfestival.com. You'll see all the info you need, the lineup, the schedule, and everything you need to know. So I'm here early, and I'm going to do y'all a favor. I'm going to go test and try out some of the crawfish dishes that they're offering today and let you know which ones that you need to get when you come. We're at the Louisiana Crawfish Festival, uh, Chalmette, Louisiana. We start tonight at 5. We go all the way through Sunday. All right, the Crawfish Festival has uh, a lot of music, a lot of rides. Um, people from all over the world come here. Um, come through St. Bernard Parish, we get anywhere from 80 to 100,000 people in four days. You know, we got crawfish anywhere you like it. You got it bald, we got it on pizza, we got it on t-shirts, we got it on hats. Uh, anywhere you like crawfish, we have it. Crawfish is major culture down here. You know, it's, uh, it's a crustacean, so uh, seafood. Anything seafood uh, down in St. Bernard Parish, we love it. Uh, you know, we're kind of the first festival to kick off the season, and uh, that's why I think we pack them in. Plus, you know, we went from a mom and pop little bitty festival in 1975 to where it's at today. Great, don't forget. $30 all day to Rod Rock for kids. LouisianaCrawfishFestival.com. You get two, $2 deduction to, uh, if you pay online. We, we're the Knights of Columbus, 8442 out of St. Bernard Parish, Violet. And we do doing crawfish pizza. So we got crawfish plus shrimp. And we have onions in it. We got garlic in it. A little cream sauce that we make. And we go ahead and we make up, put it on top of the pizza. And we serve a crawfish pizza. Oh, look, we are making seafood pizza full of shrimp and crawfish, tons of butter. Woo, unbelievable. Mozzarella cheese on the top. Cook it at about 450 for about 10 minutes or so. And that bad boy is done. Is crawfish a big part of culture here in the Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Big thing. This is all, you know, it's all marine life around here. I mean, everything, you know. 
Yeah. That's just the way that's the way it goes around here. Yep. Fly one right in there, and that's it. That is it. Now now all we gotta do is wait. Can y'all be here all weekend? Yes, we will. We'll be here all the way till Sunday evening. Oh, here Ooh. we go. Ooh. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Look brother. at that. Beautiful. Ooh. Wow. Wait. Then we got our own board we made. It's got grooves in it. Hey, Everybody cool. gets an even cut. How about that? Nobody gets a bigger piece or a smaller piece. And it just follows the grooves. How about that? Isn't that cool? You must have done this before. I, I, yeah. And I, I'm the one that made the board. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sometimes I can't see the old age. And there we are. That is the pizza right there, baby. Ooh. All right, y'all. Look there at we that. Go. There we go. Ooh, the shrimp and crawfish wait. pizza from the Knights of Columbus. Mm. Boy, is that buttery? He said every bite, you're going to have a crawfish or a piece of shrimp. It is good. And that is true. Mm. Not bad, huh? That's not bad at all. <laughs> not bad at all. Knights of Columbus booth, crawfish and shrimp pizza. Come see them at the Crawfish Festival. Going on all weekend. Don't miss it. All right, so we have Family Cajun Kitchen, which is our local restaurant in Chalmette. Um, today we're serving crawfish cheese fries, which I'm preparing now. Um, we're going to have a seafood stuffed uh, pepper egg roll. And we're also going to do deep fried seafood raviolis topped with uh, crawfish cheese sauce. Oh my God. <laughs> this is our fries. This is not your ordinary fries. This is seasoned fries, crispy fries. So even when you put sauce on it, it stays crispy for a, a little while, longer than regular fries would. Season it up a little bit. Shake it up. And we have our Cajun. Crawfish cheese sauce loaded with crawfish. Let's get with a little paprika. Cajun crawfish cheese fries. Go visit us at Family Cajun Kitchen. All right, y'all, look at that. Look at that. The Cajun crawfish cheese fries, son. Got to come see him at the Family Cajun Kitchen booth at the Louisiana Crawfish Festival. Get your crawfish fix on some cheese fries. Now, when they serve you cheese fries with a fork, you know they did it right. You got to get some cheese fry. You got to get some crawfish. It's like I just went to the crawfish bowl and then you took it and put it on french fries. I love it. Come get it, y'all. I'm making a crawfish Monica. It's Alfredo. They have cheese and it's different seasoning. And the most main one is the crawfish. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. The crawfish Monica from Poor House. Come see their booth if you want a crawfish Monica that tastes just like your mama. Mm. That's amazing, y'all. Come see them, the Poor House booth. Let's go try some more. Hey, I'm Chad with Charlie's Restaurant and Catering here in Violet, Louisiana. We serving up all crawfish except for these strawberry and cream beignets. And we have uh, tater tots for the kids that we put crawfish sauce on. We have our chimichangas. We got crawfish pies. We got our famous crawfish pasta. We have crawfish cakes. We got grilled catfish with a crawfish sauce. And then this is our crawfish sauce that we put on everything here except for the beignets. This is so good. Look at that. Look at that. That is ridiculous. I had this last year. This was my favorite thing here last year. The crawfish chimichanga. The Charlie's booth at the Crawfish Festival. The chimichanga. He's got plenty more to choose from. Come see the man. Let him feed you. Uh, this is a Ruben concession, and we got a crawfish at the bay. Our famous crawfish at the bay. Uh, uh, it goes over the rice. Look at that. It has shrimp, too. Oh, crawfish and shrimp at the bay. Crawfish and shrimp. Oh, wow. Look at that, y'all. All right, they're giving y'all the two for one on that when you get the crawfish and the shrimp in this at Tuesday. Come try them out. 
You ready? Hey, first batch of the crawfish for Louisiana Crawfish Festival 2023. The fish and first batch. Go on in. Oh, hey, I hope that's one of many, many, many more. We just need, we just need uh, a little sunshine. Good luck to take care of us all. A worthy cause here. <laughs> there it is. Yes, indeed. That's a nice size plate. Nice size plate. And it ain't even got the vegetables in it. <laughs> Alright y'all, the boiled crawfish, you gotta come get it. The only boiled crawfish at the festival from Today's Catch. That's the name of this booth. I know y'all seen them before on the show. Today's Catch, boiled crawfish. Come see them. They do a very good boiled crawfish. If you don't know how to do it, you just simply pop the head. Take your quick peel and then just get dirty. Mm. So good. And be feeling adventurous when you come to the Crawfish Festival. Suck the head. Come see him at this booth. I promise, I promise you won't be disappointed. Come get that ball crawfish. We're crawfish to go. Right now we're doing the jalapeno crawfish bites. And first we're putting the, uh, the batter together. What you're frying at? We're frying at 375. So this is about three to five minutes. We put in uh, there's the jalapenos, rice, um, broccoli, crawfish, and another uh, a season that we make up. If I told you, then I had to get fired. All right, look at that—the jalapeno crawfish bites with some broccoli, some rice, some cheese. Oh my goodness, y'all! Perfectly crunchy on the outside. Got the good cheesiness going on the outside. Not too spicy. Perfect amount of jalapeno. Perfect breading. Now let's try it with their Cajun sauce. Mmm. Oh. That's that beautiful little finish from touch. This is called the Crawfish 2 Go. Crawfish 2 Go booth at the Louisiana Crawfish Festival. Come see them. Come get your fix. But he's delicious. Little jalapeno bites. Mmm. Mm -mm. Some more of the sauce. Don't sleep on them. Come see them. We got a crawfish eggplant, pine aid, pine aid eggplant. You put you put the sauce on anything, Jared. Anything. You like duck? That is amazing on some duck. Very good, man. So much of this sold. We sell so much of this. It's ridiculous. Yeah, all right y'all what a better way to close it out than back here at charlie's with the panade eggplant and some crawfish sauce if you don't come this year make sure you come next year plan your trip it's always in the spring stay tuned into the facebook page for visit st bernard the website for visit st bernard we hope to see y'all i hope i showed you the best food to get and we'll see y'all next time All right, today I'm trying to go catch some crawfish. I'm still looking for a good little crawfish hole, a little ditch somewhere, maybe even a bayou, a pond, just anything where I can go catch some of my own crawfish. I got a little area I wanna go try today, so I've got my nets, I've got some bait, and I'm about to head down there and go see what I can catch, so we'll see y'all out there. All right, I'm gonna show y'all the type of nets I'm using today. This is called a pyramid net. It's a very, very simple, piece of equipment boom it pops out like that okay they've got it tied here so that it creates just enough tension to stay open and then your nets connect down at the bottom of each of these rods very simple you've got uh i'd say that's probably about 15 inches of net 15 inch square and then you got a bait clip and for bait, I'm using some rabbit parts, some rabbit spines, and 
different things from cleaning rabbits on a rabbit hunt let's go check these nets i've got a few out testing right now let's go see what we got so what you want to do is approach with a stick because once the crawfish see you they're not sticking around uh, we got one crawfish in this one he's so little he climbed out the net all right let's put this one back let it keep fishing And what I've been doing is I use this end to kind of push it down like that. All right, let's go check our next one. Holy cow. That's what you like to pick up and see. That's what I'm talking about right there, y'all. That, that's a good net a couple little guys if we could get them all to like that we'll be doing all right oh yeah all right we've got some crawfish mostly small ones but we're catching catching a few right. that's what we're catching y'all red swamp crawfish like to see a few more bigger ones we got a few though All right, well, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. When life gives you a few small crawfish, you turn them into catfish. I'm here on the banks of the Mississippi River, and I found a little pond, and I'm gonna try to catch some catfish using those little crawfish I caught. Let's see if these catfish are ready to bite. It's springtime, everything good is happening. I see blackberries everywhere, so we just need some catfish to up our meat ratio a little bit. All right, so we're going to take our crawfish here. I'm going to hook him right through the tail, just like that. All right, so we got a crawfish on a jig head with a little cork. Let's see what we can get. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Guys, a catfish. Yes, sir. All right. All right, y'all. Got our first catfish on the day. Nice little channel cat. There he is. Got him. All right. All right. Come on, buddy. 
Come on, buddy. Get on up here. Get on up here. All right. There we go, y'all. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one, huh? All right. Well, we caught a few. I had a lot of them come off. I really don't know what that was all about. Uh, I was getting good hook sets on them, but unfortunately a few of them came off, but I've got two nice catfish. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick some of these blackberries on the walkout, make sure I have some dessert to go with my catfish dinner. I mean, they got berries all over the place. Look at that. Look at these beautiful berries, y'all. Yes, indeed. So these are actually called dewberries, and they grow on briar bushes. They're not quite blackberries. They got these briar bushes that grow everywhere, and that's the dewberries that grow on them. How about that? All right, Jack's got one. Get him, Jack. Get him in, Jack. All right. Come up, come up, Jack. Come up, Jack. Yeah. Oh, big one. Good job, Jack. I'm just gonna get him over this log. There you go. Okay, now let me do it. Let me do it. All right, All right hold on. All right, you good. You good. You good. Stop. 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 What you say, Jack? Good. All right, folks. Well, you got to see it from catching the bait to catching the fish, picking the blackberries. We really are living off the land here on Outside the Levees. I do want to say now's a good time. If you want to pause the video real quick, go get some merch. If you look below this video, there's a merch grid and that will take you directly to my store where you can get t-shirts. So please, if you can and you want to support the channel, go get you some merch right now. Pause the video. Go do it. Go get you a nice shirt and let me know what you got. All right, now I've got my blackberries ready. We're going to go ahead and start a blackberry cobbler first. That's going to be the first thing that we do because this will take the longest to cook. I've got about four cups of berries in this eight by eight dish here. What we want to do first is just kind of get probably about a quarter of that onto the berries. Spread throughout these berries. Throw it a little bit more onto the berries. There we go. Now we're down to about a true cup here. Okay. All right, and we'll go ahead and bake. Get our oven set at 375. Go ahead and preheat that. And we'll let these berries sit for a little while with that sugar on them. Okay, into a bowl. Go ahead and with one cup of sugar and one cup of flour mix that up real good now into that crack one egg and go ahead and mix all that up real good you want to get all of that mixed up good 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 all right, you should be able to tell that your egg has gone through all the flour and all the sugar in there that made this beautiful little crumble looking topping for the top of our cobbler. All right, now go ahead and put your topping over your blackberries. Spread it out smooth. And then we melted six tablespoons of butter and that all goes on top okay now it's ready to go into the oven all right y'all now so for the catfish i'm gonna do a fried catfish po'boy but i'm trying this this is something new 
This is air fryer breading for fish that you can do in the air fryer. So I won't have to use oil or do any deep frying. So we're gonna try this. I've never tried it. So I don't know what we're gonna get. I've been wanting to try it. The good news is, even if it doesn't come out that great, it's going on a sandwich and the sandwich will cover up the rest. But let's go ahead and try this. I love uh, Louisiana brand, their crawfish boil seasoning. So let's try out their air fryer bread. Uh, hopefully this will be a little bit healthier and you know it's gonna go pretty good on a po' boy, so let's try this out. All right, so I rinsed off my fish, I left them fairly damp, and then you go ahead and coat it with the air fryer mix, and then I'm gonna drop them in the air fryer, I'm gonna run it at 380 degrees for about eight minutes, then I'm gonna stop, check them, flip them over, and then let them go for about another f All right, y'all, now we wanna go ahead and build out our po' boy. I'm using this Risings po' boy bread, if you're not from the Louisiana area and you're able to get French po' boy bread, let me know what y'all have. I'm curious to know how you guys are getting your hands on some good po' boy bread. All right, to dress a po' boy, that's what we call it, a dressed po' boy, you wanna go ahead and get you some mayonnaise on it. Since it's fried fish, I wanna go ahead and also add some ketchup. I also wanna go ahead and add some Tabasco sauce. Next, we'll go with our tomatoes and our lettuce. Then on the bottom side, we'll go with our fish. Man, I really am happy with that air fryer fish. That is awesome. Pickles on the fish. And there you have it. There's your fried air fryer catfish po' boy. How about that? Them old catfish had no idea what they were going to get turned into. All right, y'all, there it is. Man, I love catching catfish from the bank. What a fun trip. Now let's try it out. Yes, indeed. Mm. If you do go ahead and make one of these, let me know. Shoot me an email, outside the levees at gmail.com. Also, just leave me a comment. Let me know. How did you like this show? How did you like the episode? You want to see more bank fishing, which when I did a live, everyone said they wanted to see more bank fishing, so that's what I'm going to start doing. Mm. Gotta love a good po' boy. I hear that dewberry cobbler going off too, so that's what's coming up for dessert. Don't leave yet, because we got to test that out too. Mmm. Mm -hmm. all right y'all there it is there's my cobbler i got the wonderful blue bell best vanilla ice cream in the world and we're gonna take some of that and get it on the cobbler oh oh, oh. look at that mm -hmm. all right folks there is that delicious dewberry cobbler from the banks of the mississippi river don't get no better than that huh Finished off that po' boy. Now it's time for dessert. Mm. Now what I love about this cobbler and doing it this way is that top gets super crunchy. Whereas, you know, a lot of cobbler recipes uh, have a softer topping. You know, this one's crunchy. So you get that like crunchy and then the, the berry flavor, the sweet, the ice cream. Definitely want to serve it warm with the cold ice cream. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Well, folks, not much more to say than that. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. We definitely love having you on the channel. Love having you a part of what I do. Uh, it's going to be a busy spring. Let me know what else you want to see. We can do lots more cat fishing, bank fishing. Uh, crabs should be coming back out. I'm here for y'all, so you let me know what you want to see. Leave me a comment, like the video, and we'll see y'all soon. Welcome Ooh. back to Outside the Levees. I'm actually hanging out inside the levees for today's video, and I'm starting it off here at Today's Catch in Shelmet, Louisiana. We got a Mardi Gras parade tomorrow, and I need to get some crawfish to cook for the Mardi Gras parade. It's not quite time to catch wild crawfish yet, so the easiest thing to do is to come to a place like Today's Catch, and luckily here, when you visit St. Bernard, we got lots of seafood spots like this. But honestly, this is one of the best ones you're gonna find when you come to St. Bernard. Let's go check them out. Michelle, how much did you pack 
I'm gonna get him this there he is. Yet. Look at here. <laughs> this lady here, I got to say this, is the most, one of the most faithful, today's catch, yes. customers that we have. She gets her 20 pounds of live crawfish every sack. <laughs> like a vitamin for you, huh, Miss Rose? I mean, I mean, so back here, look, this is the back of the house. This is where all the work is done. Jeffrey, Jeffrey's got some, some beautiful local shrimp. Get ready to ball up. Some beautiful 1620s, 1015s. Kevin's here. Get ready to get some, some crabs going. Kevin, look at those crabs, man. This is crabs straight from uh, St. Bernard Parish. Uh, we, we try to, to stay with everything local as much as we possibly can. You look over here, Curtis is cutting a uh, pond raised catfish up that goes into the kitchen. It's actually being fried uh, for orders as they're coming in. All right, well, that's what I came here for the crawfish. We got the Mardi Gras parade tomorrow. Nothing's going to be better with that than a bunch of crawfish. I'm going to do them three different ways, so make sure. Y'all stick around the whole video so you get to see all the different top three ways I cook crawfish. Then if you come over here and see, we offer varieties, different varieties of cooked seafood to go. It's a one-stop shop, man. You know, we're here for 38 years. That must, must tell you something. We must be doing it right. We sure try, and most of all, we sure appreciate it. All right, so when you come to visit St. Bernard, make sure you come to Today's Catch. I promise it is one of the top, best places you're going to be able to get fresh seafood, whether you get it to cook or you get it already cooked. They have it. So let me go in the back, get my crawfish, and get everything ready for this Mardi Gras parade tomorrow. All right, y'all, well, before we get started cooking all them crawfish, I stopped here at the Knights of Nemesis headquarters. This is where it all goes down. They're getting ready, getting the floats loaded up with all of the throws. They're having a good breakfast. The band's playing. It's Mardi Gras, y'all. It's all about having a good time. We started our parade, uh, 2004 was the year we decided that we were gonna ride. But what we love is that exactly, just seeing the people out on the streets having a good time. Um, we enjoy it. We try to keep our community together. You'll see people out on the street boiling crawfish on the grill and doing all that thing during the day. And um, it's such a great time. Everybody brings their family and kids. In fact, we even have kids that ride in our Mardi Gras parade. So it's a really good time. That's good. All right, what you got there? So anyway, we have uh, Knights and Nemesis branded throws. We have Frisbees, uh, footballs. And then we have our signature uh, spear and Knights of Nemesis sword, of course. Uh, what you say, son? <laughs> How about that? Hey, what you say? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so you heard it. This is a great Mardi Gras parade to come to with the family. If it was me and I was planning my trip to St. Bernard for next year, I would go ahead and allot a few days to fish, to crab off the public pier, and also to come to the Mardi Gras parade and dine at our awesome restaurants in St. Bernard. So come see him at the Knights of Nemesis. All right, y'all, we at mother-in-law's house and we cooking. It's Mardi Gras, everybody's here, so it's gonna be noisy, but that's the whole point of Mardi Gras. All right, so I'm gonna start with two dishes um, that actually kind of have the same base. I'm gonna start with a crawfish Monica base and a crawfish bread base. And they're basically the same up until about the halfway point. So I'm gonna show y'all how we do it. All right, we're gonna get two sticks of butter melted down in this pot, two full sticks of butter that you're gonna melt down. All right, next we're gonna drop in our Holy Trinity. I got mine pre-chopped because I'm ready to go to the parade. I don't wanna spend my time chopping fish. All right, this is onion, celery, and bell pepper all going in. Put that down for a little while so those onions are nice and soft. We got Luke watching the video. There he is, that's my nephew Luke. Y'all remember Luke from the crabbing video? Luke's ready to go get some more crabs. All right, so that's been cooking about 10 minutes. Now it's time for the main ingredient, some crawfish tails. And these are not from another country. These are from the United States, which if you like to use the foreign ones, that's fine, go ahead. But we went ahead. We know that the guys at Today's Catch use the good stuff. So we got it from them. I got three packs of this. They're one pound packs. All right, stir that up. All right, so that wound up being one and a half containers of the onions, the bell pepper, and the celery. 
Oh, that's beautiful. You like that? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's cooked for about 10, 15 oh, minutes. So now what we want to do is separate it. We want about a third Look. of what's in there to go into this bowl that already has about half a packet of softened cream cheese. So get yourself, like I said, about a third of what's in there on top of this cream cheese. This is for the crawfish bread right here. Okay, what's gonna be left in the pot is for the crawfish Monica. All right, so I'm gonna finish working on the crawfish Monica first, which is a delicious crawfish pasta with some cream and some cheese. So next, now that we've got that, we wanna add some parsley. Let's kinda of see how much we need here. I like parsley, I like, I think it makes for a pretty dish. We'll add a little bit more. All right, okay. Some parsley. I got a whole lemon here I'm gonna squeeze into it. Mm. Then I'm gonna add half and half, probably about half a cup. There's a lot of liquid in there. Is that milk? Um, it's called half and half. Mm. Look how pretty that is, Jack. Look how pretty that is. It looks prettier is, on the camera. It looks prettier on the camera, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so I got my boy Hot Rod. This is Hot Rod's Creole seasoning. Go check him out, hotrodscreole.com. And we wanna season the whole dish with this. This is, you know, like a typical Creole style seasoning, but from a guy who lives right here in St. Bernard. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and drop in. This is two packages of the Rotini oh, pasta. Rotini pasta, two packages. Start dropping that in. Start dropping in your routine. I really want to try it so bad. Okay, oh, we're not done yet, bro. All right, got that fairly mixed up. Go ahead and start dropping in some shredded Parmesan cheese. Shredded Parmesan cheese. Use the whole thing. And some shredded yeah, mozzarella do. cheese. Oh, do we know how to use this? Oh boy, crawfish Monica coming right up. All right, so that's your crawfish Monica. That's done. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish the crawfish bread. It's crawfish season, y'all, and it's Mardi Gras. All right, now this is gonna be our mixture for the crawfish bread, okay? So this needs some grated Parmesan cheese. Make sure you can see it, okay, Jack? Some grated Parmesan. Keep, no, no, keep that up. Some mozzarella. Green onions. Keep them up, right? And some red bell pepper. All goes, this one's for the crawfish bread, okay? This is all gonna get melted down into some delicious crawfish bread. Okay, do a little bit more Parmesan. I think that's looking pretty good, y'all. All right, next is to get it in the bread. All right, now, so for my crawfish bread, I was looking around on YouTube for an easy crawfish bread recipe, and I found one using the Pillsbury Crescent dough, and y'all know I like the Pillsbury pizza dough. So there's a channel called Coop Can Cook. So Coop Can Cook, this is definitely your idea. I appreciate it. She got two of these crescent doughs and put them together, okay? So you, you, you kind of mash two together. Can you see good there, Jack? And then you go in with your crawfish stuffing, okay? All right, Mama, are you getting the egg wash for me? All right. And then what she did, what I thought was really cool, you cut these, you getting this? She got these cuts in there. And that's gonna help us wrap up the whole thing. Isn't that cool? So shout out to her, Cook Can Cook. Very good channel about cooking, go check her out. Okay, we'll make us a good end here. Wow. Right? Wow is a good word. Let's do that. All right, next we're gonna put some egg wash on top. Paint it down with egg wash real good. Uh, so now that's gonna go into the oven for 350. We'll let it go 20 minutes and then we'll give it a look. All right, let's check out that crawfish bread. Oh, 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 oh,
times are hard in St. Bernard, y'all. We got it hard down here. Look at that. Look at that. I don't even know what to say right now. Jeez. All right, we're going to let it cool off, but I've got to try that here pretty soon. All right, crawfish break coming through. Kids coming through. Who's going to catch the most beads? I need me. I'm going to smoke all of y'all. All right, we at the parade. The crawfish bread is done. Let's try it out. Oh my God. Ridiculous. All right, so that's the number two way to cook crawfish. Let's catch the parade, get some beads, get some good stuff, and then we'll figure out the number one way to cook crawfish when we're done. Okay, ready? Alright, let's see what we got. That's good. That's right. good. That's my beautiful wife, Tia. She never wants to be on my show. Here she is eating my crawfish bread. Mm -hmm. What you think? She always gives me honest opinions. Messy. It's supposed to be messy. It's delicious. Everything's delicious. <laughs> we at CrossFit Chalmette, so if you do come to visit St. Bernard, you need a good place to work out. Come see him at CrossFit Chalmette. Is it? Is what? Kid friendly. It's kid friendly. We got a kids class. of a parade we back here we about to cook some crawfish and you guessed it the number one way to cook crawfish is to boil them it just don't get no better people all around the world right now are paying premium money to eat boiled crawfish and we got it right here in Louisiana where these crawfish are from right after a wonderful Mardi Gras parade so we getting everything set up let's get cooking all right so what we did so far we fill up we put them in here how many times you did this? Twice? This is my third time right yeah. now. So what we do is we fill it with water, okay? With nice fresh water out the hose. And what that does is it gets some of the mud off of the body of the crawfish and also helps them to kind of like get the fresh water through their system and get some of the, the mud and, and less desirable stuff out. All right. Then we got the and we pull the plug. And that's it, let it drain. Looking good. And you'll repeat that process until that water is pretty clean. All right, and just like we did for that pasta, we're going with our buddy Hot Rods Creole one more time. He makes his own seafood boil mix. Hot Rods a smart dude, knows how to do it, and that's who we're using. One pack of this from one sack of crawfish. We're also gonna do some corn and potatoes and mushrooms. It'll cover it all. All right, Troy's got his onions and his celery in. I'm gonna add the Hot Rods. A lot of people traditionally will use lemon juice, but I like pineapple juice. 
We're just about ready. So we're gonna add some pineapple juice. The top three ways to cook crawfish. We got crawfish Monica, crawfish bread, and of course, good old fashioned bald crawfish. Now can we eat it? Of course we can. Yeah! Everybody dig in. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to play in your trip to St. Bernard, leave me a comment. Let me know what you need to know about St. Bernard. I'll help you out the best I can, and we'll see y'all soon. folks we are up and going we got up early this morning before the sunrise took us a nice long drive over here to morgan city louisiana and we are going commercial crawfishing that's right a buddy chad jordan from hook and line i know y'all seen him on here before he's got about 190 crawfish traps out there we're fixing to go check that he sells at the market because we know you folks love crawfish so let's get in the boat and get out there and get to work Tell us what we're doing. Put the sacks on this picking table. Okay, and what does that do? We'll dump the cage in here, sort through it, get all the trash out, and then rake them down into the sack. Gotcha. So, so one know. side's for trash, one side's oh, for crawfish? Both, both, both sides are both for crawfish. Sides crawfish. Cra okay. Yeah, we, we hand pick the trash out of it. Oh, okay, I gotcha. And how many pounds would typically go in a sack? Well, right now. 34 pounds. Yeah, 34, 34. 35. Depending on the size of the crawfish. You know, yeah. the big ones obviously take up more space so you don't get as much. Money. Right. And what makes this area good for crawfish that we're in right now? Rick, take over there. The lilies. The lily, the alligator grass. Crawfish eat the roots of the lilies. Uh huh. Yeah, you can pick it up and see. This ain't no good. Oh, uh, okay. This is our this is our first trap. See, it's marked here and trapped there. So he's just gonna work on down the line, hitting his marks, pulling traps. The bait has been eaten out. We're not rebaiting these. Normally you would get everything out and then rebait it and put it back. Y'all got catfish for bait? Mullet. 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 crawling up to the top of the traps. Oh! 
y'all you see that you can see them down in the trap they kind of come to the top but I, how what are these four foots yeah yeah, these are four yeah. Foot. four foot pillow traps y'all let Shay grab that one kind of give them a wash them out best you can before you put them out of the water right. and they're tied off see here's the string he's tied off to the tree here Working on the sack already. What eating the mother ain't nothing left with the mound. Ain't nothing left. They're from Louisiana come from this swamp right here. cypress mixed in as well but a lot of willows this is black willow and this is actually an invasive plant called a hyacinth but it turns out to be great for crawfish all right tell us your name buddy we didn't get to introduce you yet my name is ricky lacoste ricky lacoste and you're from here in morgan city yep how long you been crawfishing for Oh! No, I went fishing yesterday. Oh, see. No, 50 something years. Crap. You've been craw fishing for 50 something years. You still love doing it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you never get tired of pulling up that trap, huh? Right now. So, are we off to a good start today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This sack is just about full, huh? Well, oh, that one, yeah. Yeah. I let them get a little, so I can pack them down. Right. Now these boats are designed to be really narrow, so you can slip in and out of stuff like this. This is a crawfish bateau, probably built somewhere right here in Morgan City. This oh, is a... that in my town. <laughs> oh, really? I built in my town. But the design came from here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the design of the boat is 100% Louisiana. Right. Big ones in this one. Yeah, okay. Good size. Yeah. That's right, that all big ones.
so you'll see the orange ribbon there that's another trapper so what you do is you just run your color okay he's gonna respect that guy that guy's gonna respect him and everybody there's enough for everybody to go around as you can see I mean every trap is catching really good that was a hell of a trap right there I was Every racing close. for it. Yeah, that was a close one. So this spot here is almost all open water. I'm interested to see. I bet you don't catch nearly as well. No, not bad. Not bad. And those are touching the bottom. They're yeah. resting on the bottom. Uh -huh. Resting on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. See, like, look how narrow of a spot you got to fit through. That's what this boat is perfect for. How long is the boat? 20? 20. 20. There's a 20-foot long boat, but it's, heck, it's probably, I don't know, 40 inches wide? 40? 40? The bottom? 40? 48? Look at that. Just slipping right through all this stuff. There's another pink ribbon up here. Got some bank. Got a big log we're about to go over. There we go. That's gonna be a good one. even a full mullet to catch all of these crawfish. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, a big mullet yep. though. Okay, all right. That it's makes sense. Salt, salt water mullet. Yep. Big salt water mullet, yeah. Still. Yeah, look at this. That's a big mullet. This one's dropped. Oh, I know. All right, now the spot we're in right now, Mr. Rick was saying, is flooded annually. It always has water on it, but the water levels do fluctuate. So as it fluctuates, you'll change kind of where you're setting your traps, how you're setting them. But this area does stay flooded annually. coming just about done uh chad said he brought 12 total today so let's hope we get those all filled and if we do i don't know what we're gonna do with the extra we'll have we'll have to see minutes that's two sacks uh, going rate is about a dollar fifty per pound that's selling to a buyer on the open market I think they're what at about 250 a pound something like that right now now that's when you go to buy from the retailer obviously the further away you live the higher that price goes up but about dollar fifty a pound right now is what they're getting at the dock
What was the best year of crawfishing you ever had? Me? When I was fishing 65 trap for 28 sacks, then three Shh. foot single throats. <laughs> Just for frame of reference. And you know we're getting there? You know we're getting there? 25 cents a pound. <laughs> in what year? 1970? That was in the 70s. 70? All right. So for frame of reference, he said how, 16 for 20 for 28 sacks? 65 trap for 28. 65 for 28. And what are we doing today? We're doing 200 for <laughs> no, 12. <not> <laughs> about 170. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, oh, we yeah, got about 25 unbeat it. Yeah, yeah. Right. we left a lot unbeated, wasn't catching. Just like most things, it used to be better in the old days, huh? That's right. How many sacks you think we're getting today? I figured 15. Why That's didn't it. you grab extra sacks? You knew we only That's had 12. Right. We passed everywhere to buy these sacks. You thinking we're going to get 15 sacks? We can put a whole sack in here and block this off. <laughs> That's the point. We'll have to cook some on the boat, huh, Rick? Beautiful crawfish. All right, now we are in early May, so this is kind of late spring, early summer for us. Uh, some days it feels definitely like an early summer day. Today it's a little bit cool. We had a rainstorm. Some of the demand for crawfish starts to die off after Easter. So you see the price starts to stable out, get a little bit lower at that point, but they're still getting a pretty good price for what they catch. All right, now you'll notice the trap is on this side of the tree. So if we look that way, that is the southerly direction that is heading south. If we look this way, that is heading north. The Chafalaya is a basin, meaning that it drains from the top to the bottom, right? So that's north. Your water enters there from the rivers and then flows through south. So your, your water direction is predominantly always flowing south. Crawfish tend to walk against the current north. That's why you sit on that side of the tree. On to the boxes now. On to the boxes. How much do you reckon the box holds? A hundred thousand, Y'all, that is the last trap for the day, right, Mr. Chan? Yes, sir. Last cage of the day. Good day, huh, bro? It was a real good day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. So we filled up all the 12 sacks, and we got, what would you say, close to 15. <laughs> My man called 15. I know 15 and a half. Yeah. Yes, indeed. That's old school right there, huh? Did y'all ever use boxes instead of sacks? When you run out, you use whatever you can. Yeah, well, I'm saying back in the day, or did y'all always have sacks? Oh, we always had sacks. You always had sacks, yes. We just didn't buy none today. We didn't stop nowhere. Can you tell me you never forgot your sacks back then? Huh? You never forgot it? Nope. Oh, come on. <laughs> all the time, me and Tobin, when we put out bed by that time, we put them 100-something traps out. We went, we didn't have but about four sacks. <laughs> went back the next time, we had 12 freaking sacks. So we had to call and get some sacks brought to us at the landing. It's a good day, fellas. All right, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it up. 12 sacks. Plus, we almost filled one of those boxes to the top. Wonderful day. I hope y'all got to see what it's like to run crawfish traps as a commercial fisherman down here in the Chafalaya Basin, America's biggest swamp. Now, we got crawfish. You know what we got to do. We got to eat. All right, y'all. Well, like I've been doing, we went ahead and did a crawfish boil first, right? I boiled all those crawfish. We all ate them together as a family. 
and then we saved as many tails as we could once everyone was done eating. You've already seen me boil crawfish, so my goal is to show you what to do with your crawfish tails that you have left over after the boil. All right, so what we're gonna make is a fried crawfish boudin ball. Look at that. Mm. Let's just get right to work on these. First thing we're gonna wanna do is just do a light chop on these crawfish. We just wanna break them down a little bit. They're gonna roll up into a ball better if they're not full size tails. You don't need to overdo it. You definitely don't need to run them through a food processor, but just give them a nice light chop just to break them up a little bit more than what they were. And something kind of like that. All right, so I've got my bowl of loose boudin here. This is boudin that I made. Uh, the video we actually did where we caught a hog, I would highly recommend going watch that, seeing how we cook this boudin. Boudin is a ground sausage and rice mix with some uh, green onion and some seasoning. You can buy it in a case or you can get it loose. You definitely want it loose when you make boudin balls. All right, so we'll go ahead and get our crawfish in there. Get an idea what our ratio is. Okay, pretty close to 50-50. I'd say it's pretty gosh darn close. Okay, all right, now we wanna test and see if it'll form a good ball without us having to add anything. All right, so it formed a ball, but I feel like that's gonna fall apart pretty easily. So we do wanna go ahead and add an egg. All right, that egg is gonna work as your binder. I just, as I'm always working with ground meat, go ahead and get my hands dirty. All right, so now go ahead and take you some pinches about like that, about the same size as you would do your meatballs for meatball and, and spaghetti. Make you some little meatballs out of that, okay? It's a good thing we chopped up our crawfish. All right, once you get it to a nice formed wall, Get it in some breadcrumbs. I'm using Italian breadcrumbs here. You can use whatever you have. I've seen people use uh, chopped up pork rinds for this, but go ahead and get it rolled, covered. And there you go. That's what you're going for. Set that aside, make them all. All right, when your oil comes up to temp, go ahead and drop them in. And you'll want to move them around so they don't burn. All right, folks, and there they are by themselves. That is a delicious little bite. But y'all know me, I don't do anything without a little bit of sauce. We're gonna put some ramelade on these. Get you some good ramelad sauce on there. This little guy needs a little bit more, okay? Go ahead and hit it with some paprika. Beautiful. Might as well put some crab meat on top. You know what I'm saying? We had some crabs left over from a crabbing trip. Let's put some crab meat on top. Mm, mm, mm. Finish it off with some parsley. And there it is, folks. Good, good stuff. All right, folks. Good way to spend the day out on the crawfish boat with your friends. Make you some delicious crawfish boudin balls. Mmm. Look at that. Mmm-hmm. Look at that, look at that. Bring that to a party, see if you make some friends, huh? Mmm, so good. Thought I had the crab meat and everything on it. Mmm, yeah, you're right. As always, I appreciate you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of what I do week in, week out. And we'll see y'all next time.